Today we're going to talk about the PRC. That's a precision rifle cartridge in 6.5 and in 300. We've got a couple Christensen rifles with some brand new Zeiss optics, including the Conquest here and the LRP S3. We're also going to show you some data on the velocities we got from these cartridges and how they shot suppressed. But first, here's Brad. So who's ready for uh, fall hunting season? <laughs> fall bear season is right around the corner for us. Uh, we will start our hunt on October 1st. I'm Brad, this is my son, Hunter. Uh, ironically, this hunt and my son are the reason that AB even exists today. So what we're building is a 6.5 PRC and a 300 uh, PRC. Both cartridges are from Hornaday and then have some, some ancestry, I guess you would say, uh, back to even, I believe, GA Precision and some other people in the industry that uh, are involved. And when we talk about these new cartridges, you know, being a, coming up on an old timer soon, um, you know, shooting a lot of varmints and prairie dogs uh, in my 20s and having to reload. Uh, you know, we reloaded back then because good ammo wasn't available. Uh, it was financially made sense to do so. When I see all these new cartridges a few years ago, I kind of asked myself, well, you know, why are we doing this? You know, like the 6.5 PRC, well, we've got a, you know, if you want to go back to like a 264 Winchester Magnum, uh, 300 PRC. Well, we've got 300 Win Mag, um, and there's other cartridges that are, you know, in and about, kind of producing the same thing. But the difference is on these new cartridges um, that it, 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 I'll admit, it took me a little bit to kind of wrap my head around. In the old days, on like a 300 Win Mag, if we wanted that that ultimate accuracy, well, what would you do? You 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 basically did a match chamber. You tightened up all the tolerances, and we hand loaded for it, and, and we did all this this work at home and and you know all this custom work to get them to shoot really really well they're taking all that technology that we knew in the in the older days and we're just making it production um, so the throat uh, clearance on the 300 prc is a fraction of what it is uh, on the 300 wind bag same with the 65 prc um, you know, the twist rates are able to take advantage of all these new bullets. Uh, the cases are extremely efficient with all the new powders. And it's just basically updating things. Um, so I'm really in, in impressed by what they've been able to do. Um, if, if you've got more uh, curiosity on this subject, uh, Hornaday does a podcast. And they'll go from anywhere from, like what ammo should you buy what you know for this hunt or that hunt or for this match or that match uh all the way up to talking about external ballistics and internal ballistics and they get super deep on stuff but at the same time they do have some podcasts that are that are just all top level um, so i encourage you to go look at those really enjoy those myself so the 300 prc is a christensen arms uh mpr and it's topped with a zeiss scope I've been a fan of Zeiss uh, for a long time, and this new scope, I'm not going to go into a lot of the details and the features of it, uh, and I, I had started to prepare for that, but uh, Ray over at X-Ring, who is a superbly intelligent guy when it comes to optics, and uh, I, I'm going to encourage you to go watch his video. He walks through it, and, and I learned a lot from him. Um, I think everybody could, and he does a much better ex job of explaining it than I would. So please go go visit Ray over at X-Ring. Now on the uh, 6.5 PRC, uh, we went with a, a, a different gun. And um, this is a very lightweight gun. And one of the features on it is that it has a 20 inch barrel. And we thought that would be handy for 
being in and out of the blind. Kind of have a heavier gun and a lighter gun. So we have put these guns together. We've done initial uh, velocity testing with it. Hunter, do you have, are you leaning one way or the other on the 6.5 versus the 300 just from the velocity test that we've done? You know, I'm really leaning toward the 6.5 just for the weight and size of it, maneuverability in the blind, I think is gonna be a big advantage over the 300. Um, but of course, there's nothing wrong with either either setup. Um, I just think the 6.5 is gonna have a little bit of an advantage inside the blind. And I really, at that range, I really don't need the uh, the extra energy that the 300 has to offer. So. I think but if we end up in a, in a spot and stock situation that's gonna be a long shot, we might just haul the 300 PRC yeah, with us. Yeah, I think at that point, the 300 would definitely be the way to go. Yeah, and that's the beauty. Of, of this and kind of why we why we enjoy this and why we had to had to build new guns um, it's just something fun to do it, it it all adds to the excitement of going on a hunt with your son you know do we have guns in the safe that work sure um, we have lots of stuff we could shoot but it, it's fun to put something new together during the velocity testing that was important for us um, we did it all of our testing and, and everything that we plan on shooting for this hunt and in these rifles for the near future is all Hornaday's uh, Precision Hunter. Uh, both bullets are an ELDX. First thing we had to do is get our velocities. Uh, we'll be using Hornaday's new uh, Ford Off, Ford DOF, and it's a ballistic calculator. Instead of just using a, uh, a BC, uh, it's using a whole bunch of different calculations Really curious to play with it. Uh, having used the Kestrel for years, just kind of play with it, something different. Again, it just all adds to part of this experience and what we're doing. We got our velocities. Hornaday on the 300 PRC uh, Precision Hunter advertises that at 2860 out of a 24 inch barrel. Um, with our MPR, we have a 26 inch barrel and we saw right at 2904 for velocities on that. On the 6.5 PRC, Hornaday Hunter uh, Precision Hunter advertises 24 inch barrel at 2960. So we definitely really had to shoot this one because we dropped four inches off that barrel. So we're at a 20 inch barrel and we still had 2854 uh, as an average velocity. So again, we can take that velocity, we can dump it into our Ford off uh, calculator and it'll give us our, our shooting solutions. So we've talked about the glass that's on top of the rifles that we're building. Um, but obviously binoculars are a big thing. And when it comes to, to good glass, uh, whether binoculars or scopes, spotting scopes, you know, there's that whole buy once, cry once. Um, I actually have, this is my, my first good pair of binoculars uh, that I had since my early 20s. And my now wife, then girlfriend, gave these to me. And these are uh, a Pentax uh, 8x42s. I use the snot out of these. Um, the eyepieces have have torn on them, and these worked very well for where I was in my in my life at that point. Um, the eyepieces are are basically shot and no good. Um, I've tried to get replacements, but Pentex is difficult to deal with on that. So years ago, um, I want to say in excess of 25 years. Uh, wasn't long after I was really getting into hunting and I, I kind of used those Pentex for as much as I could. I went to a, a compact set. I was doing a lot of archery hunting back then and I spent the money on, on the Leicas. Um, I probably have more time looking through these than Hunter does on his uh, game controller. If not, it's gotta be close. I've spent just days and days and days staring through these. They've been to Alaska, Canada many times. Uh, many states uh, here in the United States. But I do like these. Uh, it's a, an eight by 32, and for archery, they're very convenient. Um, I've gotten so used to wearing these things that I remember being in a grocery store and I couldn't read a sign at the end of it. I remember reaching down from my binoculars because it was just muscle memory to always have them on my chest. But the old, you know, buy once, cry once, it's what I tried on these. Problem is I had a son, and so that's uh, maybe buy twice, cry twice. So 
we stepped it up and, and this is, you know, just like the cartridges, um, everything's come along. You know, the rifles are incredible. The cartridges are incredible. Our suppressors, we like to think are incredible, um, you know, compared to the old day stuff. And again, you know, so again, these are Zeiss's. This is the 10 by 42 range finding binoculars. So instead of me having to carry a rangefinder and my binoculars, they're all built into one. The weight is not all that different. And these will range to 2,500 yards. So now that we have our, uh, our Ford off ballistics calculator, we've got our range, you know, we've got a whole lot of the solution coming together. So some of the considerations on, on suppressing these two guns, we ended at this point until Grant does the data um, with six stacks on both of them. Um, and, and even though one gun is more like a, a, a lightweight, uh, carry it all day stocking gun and, and then the 300 PRC is more of a reach out and touch somebody. Um, being a 24 inch or 26 inch barrel on the 300 PRC versus a 20 inch, it kind of offsets those. So if they were both 20 inch, I probably would have gone to an eight stack on the 300 PRC. Um, and if we were gonna go sheep hunting and I got in shape to do so, I might put a four stack uh, on the 6.5 PRC. So we're a little bit spoiled here because we can use whatever we want. Um, but uh, it is something to consider. You know, if you're building a dedicated lightweight, you know, one of these titanium Christensen arms, not that that one's tied, but they make one, it's another pound lighter. And you're gonna go, you know, to Alaska and go hunt know, high, high up uh, for sheep, um, put a two stack on there uh, or a four stack. And it takes that blast off of it, it's short. Um, you know, if you were carrying this 300 PRC on a sling and trying to duck underneath trees, uh, you, it's just a lot more work than a 20 inch barrel with a short suppressor. So that's some of the considerations in, in picking a suppressor is, you know, what are you going to do with it? Um, we understand not everybody can own 20 suppressors, even though lots of people do. But, uh, you know, your first suppressor, just get a 7.62 eight stack. Uh, it's the perfect first suppressor. You can shoot it on your 5.56. You can shoot it on both of these guns. You can shoot it on your six arc. You can shoot it on 300 blackout. Um, and then once you've got that, then you start going specialized. And that's kind of where we're at with these two right now. A six stack, an eight stack, and a 10 stack uh, on these. And that'll give you those, those different lengths. And then we'll, we'll play with a, uh, I think we'll do a Silencer Co Omega. Uh, it's a good can, solid can, but we'll, we'll always use a competitor's can to give context to what we're doing. Because DBs change you know, with the weather and we've had rain all night. Uh, we're sitting out like 60 something degrees. We we're almost 100 degrees two days ago. So uh, weather patterns are definitely changing, but I'm gonna have uh, Grant, who usually does our videos, do a lot of that data and to share it with you and to show you the weights, the lengths, the differences on, on DB uh, across these two calibers. And uh, that'll be interesting to see, so. I appreciate your time uh, for sticking it out through this. And from here, I'm gonna let Grant take it over and, and get you the DB data and all that. Out of the ridge line here in 6.5, we shot some 143 grain ELDX from Hornady. We shot it on the Raptor 6, 8, and 10, all flush mounted. We also shot with the Omega 300 for some context. And out of the NPR and 300 PRC, we shot some 212 grain ELDX from Hornady. Also on a Raptor 6, a Raptor 8, and 10, this time with a 5 inch bull barrel reflex.
you found this data valuable, please let us know in the comments which cartridge you'd like us to take a look at next. Hopefully, we have a follow-up video, uh, or at least a, a post, with a successful hunt. Are you feeling, feeling favorable? We've, we've got some good trail camera picks. I'm feeling good about it. I think last time we went out, we were a little too soon after we baited. And, we were. And so now we should have pretty good luck with it, I think. So. Trail camera picks are looking, looking really good. Kind of kind of getting antsy to get out there, but rifle season doesn't start till the first, and um, we'll, we will be there on the first for sure. Why don't you tell them about what you used on the spring hunt? That was a neat gun. Yeah, on the spring hunt, I used a uh, CMMG and a six millimeter arc. And um, yeah, that thing was nice. Um, of course, with the titanium construction, you don't really feel a lot of that weight on the front. It balances really well. You don't feel like you have a super heavy suppressor on the end of the gun, which is a big advantage, I think, um, for, you know, just hiking up the mountain and maneuvering in the blind it's definitely helpful um i believe it had a shorter barrel on it as well that was a 14 and a half inch uh six arc if y'all aren't familiar with the six arc i am in love with that cartridge um it is basically kind of an updated like i talked about with these other cartridges it's an updated six millimeter ppc uh, which was an extremely well-known uh, competition cartridge uh, back in the day and with a you know one and seven and a half twist, we can shoot a 103, 108 grain bullet out at six arc, and uh, it, it's on an AR platform. Uh, it's something that the special forces guys specifically, uh, some of the seals are even using nowadays. It suppresses well, shoots well. Uh, the energy it carries out to you know 800 yards and beyond is is just far superior to the 5.56. The only downside is. A 30 round mag turns into a 25, 25 round mag. Well, I was surprised when we shot that steel. We shot 5.56 five, and then you shoot that steel and you don't notice a big recoil impulse between the two rounds. But the six arc definitely, I mean, you can just hear it, it smacks it a whole lot harder and yep. you, can, you notice the extra energy that it carries. Yeah, I remember you, uh, when we were sighting that gun in the first time you shot the steel, you're like, oh, yeah. that's carrying a little more yeah. oomph. I mean, it, it sounds like you're shooting a 5.56, five, but when you hear it hit the steel, it sounds like a 308. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah.